Since the fall federal election, a lot of questions are hanging over the Conservative Party, like what went wrong in the campaign and who should replace Andrew Scheer as leader. Does the party need to consider some different policies? Well, both party faithful and non-conservatives have weighed in through a new poll. Shachi Curl is executive director of the Angus Reid Institute, and she joins us from Vancouver. Hi, Shachi. Hey, Vashi. Great to see you again. Let's talk a little bit about uh, this poll and specifically the big headline that emerged from it, and that is who is the top pick among party faithful. Well, not just among party faithful, but among those who might also consider voting right. for the party because there's been a big discussion about who might grow the tent. So two different subsets, two different sets of respondents. But regardless among who you're asking, it is Rona Ambrose who really emerges as the person who can bring the core of the party together uh, as being their top pick and also is someone that soft voters, possible voters might also consider. And of course, there has been so much hand wringing uh, since October 21st among conservatives and and really observation among the general public around what could the conservatives have done to make themselves more politically palatable? Look, there are a number of people who, uh, you know, more centrist voters might have supported. Rona Ambrose, of course, we've talked about. There's also people like Peter McKay. People have talked about Lisa Wright. They've talked about Aaron O'Toole. In the West, they talk about Brad wall but really the key is who are the candidates who cannot just bring uh, those would-be voters into the big blue tent but actually keep that blue tent together among the core grassroots and it is Rona who who emerges as a as a most appealing leader among both those groups speaking of sort of the uh, the direction that the party takes going forward you also uh, surveyed feelings on policy positions of the party and what needs to happen with that movement for. What did you find out? Well, listen, what we found was that, again, even core conservatives do recognize that the party on social values, they say needs to move more to the center, needs to get a little more centrist, a little bit more moderate. Issues such as having something to say on climate change, not necessarily, you know, raising the issue of gay pride or having another conversation on same-sex marriage or having conversations on abortion are issues that, again, not just would-be or soft voters are saying, yeah, the party needs to go in that direction direction, but also true blue conservative voters are saying this. And that did stand out to me because I think one of the outstanding or the unknown issues in the hours and days after Andrew Scheer's resignation was going to be, you know, where does the party go from here? And is the party united in having to, to decide on a direction, especially on a change in direction? And there was some speculation that the hard core of the party might say that the most loyal wing might say, well, no, look, actually, we like where we were. And if nobody else likes us, that's fine. But you know what, Vashi? The impetus, the urge to win and, and not lose and not be on the outside looking in is a pretty strong one. And what you're seeing right here is conservative voters and would-be conservative voters having some sense of, of, of agreement and consensus that the party does need to move more towards the center. And what about the alignment between what you just described and then the first answer you gave on the people who are polling near the top of that list? Rana Ambrose, Peter McKay, Caroline Mulroney, Michelle Rempel, Lisa Raid, Pierre Polyev. How do the... What is the alignment like between that concept of uh, values and what they want to espouse going forward and who they want to lead that charge? Well, some of that has to do with what these people might say themselves around policy. Uh, and a lot of it, Vashi, has to do actually with regional acceptability. So someone like Peter McKay, interestingly, uh, who, who might look pretty good to a would-be conservative voter in Ontario East, is maybe not as exciting in places like Alberta and Saskatchewan. On the other hand, someone like Rana Ambrose looks to be doing fairly well across the board. Now, we know that there are certain progressives in that field. We know there are people who are more uh, hardcore, big C conservative in that field. Uh, but, but you know, there's, there's a lot of names. There's a lot of people who are just saying we're not that interested until, hint, hint, nudge, nudge, they maybe look at some polling numbers and decide <laughs> maybe they are interested. Uh, of course, it's always a safe thing to say that, that, uh, that they're, they're going to hedge for the time being, take Christmas, talk to their families. But uh, ultimately, I think what the party is indicating 
and these are very early days. We should acknowledge that. Very true. But uh, but but in these early days, I think what we are hearing again from conservative voters who will vote conservative no matter who is leading the party, and those who really said no, thank you, Andrew Shear. If you had been a different candidate, we might have considered the party. Uh, those two forces are coming together to say we need to hear something a little more centrist. We need to hear something a little bit more moderate. Uh, Ambrose is perceived to fit that bill. McKay perceived to fit that bill. But again, it will come down to which of these people um, on that long list can also build coalitions, not just in places where they are strong regionally, but across the country. So you have to look at, you know, how, how does a Carolyn Mulroney do in Quebec versus uh, uh, a leader or a would-be leader who maybe isn't as bilingual like Brad Wall. These are going to be regional considerations to, to keep in mind as well. Lots to think about and for us to talk about in the coming weeks and months. Thanks, Shachi. Thanks, Shachi. Shachi Curl of the Angus Reid Institute. Welcome back to Power and Politics with the Power Panel. Kathleen Petty, Tiffany Gooch, Jeff Norquay, and Francoise Boivin. The political rumor mill is going full speed on who might run to be the next leader of the Conservative Party. You can now add Ronna Ambrose to the list of those not ruling it out. As we discussed a bit earlier with Shachi Curl of the Angus Reid Institute, there's already some positive polling about Ambrose as head of the Tories. Alberta Premier Jason Kenney and former Saskatchewan Premier Brad Wall both pointed to her as their preference in various interviews. So will she go for it? Jeff. <laughs> Will she? Should she? Is uh, she the next leader of the party from your perspective? My, my personal hope is yes. <laughs> uh, but uh, seriously, where we are right now, I think, is a bit of a phony war. Um, the leadership is open. Uh, people are spending a lot of time talking to each other. They're putting together teams. Uh, they're scoping out the possibilities uh, of, uh, of who's going to run. And in a sense, I think everybody is waiting for Ronna Ambrose because I think she is uh, the putative uh, odds-on favorite to, to get the job if she runs. So um, I think until she um, makes that decision, uh, there's going to be a lot of, of quiet, uh, it, you know, but it, it's like the duck with <laughs> uh, lots of lots going on below the surface, but That's nothing true. much to show to it. That's very true. Tiffany, what do you think? Uh, so, I, I mean, these uh, these things can turn very quickly and in lots of different directions, as uh, as we've seen. Um, I think uh, definitely thinking about what the length of this race is going to be, whether or not they'll be able to get things organized enough to have the decision take place in April. And that plays a really big role in who would uh, enter, who would be able to pull together a campaign fast enough to get in. Of course, Rana obviously has uh, a really a, a great grouping of support uh, within the party. Um, but uh, but the longer it extends, the, the more uh, sort of wild card candidates, uh, I think we'll, we'll likely also uh, have to expect. Um, $100,000 isn't that much of a, a threshold to enter a, a race for some people and 300 signatures, depending on uh, on what the uh, the criteria ends up being. And so there's there's always this possibility that this gets hijacked in a way that I think the core membership would likely prefer not to see. Um, so how quickly this can be arranged, how quickly Rana uh, can also uh, make the decision among her family, um, but obviously a very big decision to make, uh, but also have to consider um, all of those that are deciding right now, deciding if they could see themselves or throwing their support behind others, are also looking at their own long-term uh, possibilities, I'm sure, for some of these uh, premiers that are putting their support behind her are also thinking, too, about uh, their long-term uh, leadership uh, projections. And so uh, lots to consider and lots to watch for the next few months. Yeah, Francoise, they both, Jason Kenney, Premier mm -hmm. Jason Kenney and former Premier Brad Ball were saying that in response basically to speculation that they themselves might run and they both pointed to her. What does that tell us, do you think? Well, first it tells us that they don't want to run and they have a preferred <laughs> candidate. Uh, I just Thank loved, you for reading between the lines. Yeah, I, I, I just <laughs> love those polls at first where they just put names of people that are basically known or we might have heard here and there or read somewhere on, on, on social media. I mean, when you put 
uh, Polyev and uh, Rampol and, and, and company. And you know what the conservatives need right now? They don't need another Andrew Scheer. They don't need a battle where it's going to go t for 13 rounds right. before they name somebody. Yeah. So you're trying to look to the obvious. And, and of course, Rona Ambrose was a, a was a great politician, although some people might argue. And believe you me, the minute she announced is the day she becomes less popular because all the uh, the adversaries are, are, are going to, uh, I'm sure they're quick right now doing research. I mean, I was reviewing when I was uh, um, in uh, uh, Women uh, Critic, uh, her portfolio, right. and she voted, voted uh, uh, in favor of the motion uh, 312, which was presented by Woodworth, uh, a bit to Around reopen a, abortion, a, right? abortion, exact one of those abor abortion uh, uh, files, and and she voted uh, with uh, with. Uh, uh, with people against uh, uh, abortion. Uh, so it's like uh, she'll have answers to, to, and I'm just thinking that's not the path she gave herself. So, uh, of course, it's flattering when people come to you and say, hey, we see you as, uh, as the leader. But m my advice to her, if I have any advice, but I haven't done and participated in a lot, not as a candidate, but in a lot of leadership uh, uh, race uh, with uh, my time at, as a liberal, uh, it, it, it can be deadly. Think seriously, because she's a bit like the Bob Ray of the conservative uh, that Bob Ray was for the liberals. He was interim, a great interim leader, didn't, didn't present sent himself after uh, Ignatiev stepped down. Uh, Trudeau arrived, won the, uh, so is, is it good for her? I, I'm, I'm not so sure. And I, the only thing I would say to her, wait, the minute you announce is the day that you, you're not that popular. <laughs> Kathleen? Well, look, she knows what she's getting into. She decides to get into it first. Uh, secondly, uh, any positions that uh, may have evolved for her over time, I would argue that most people think that she's quite capable of articulating that evolution of thinking, which was better than one Andrew. Of the that's exactly. Sure. That's, that's exactly my point. Uh, the other thing I would say is I think there are a lot of people maybe also considering getting into the race, basing that decision on what Ronna Ambrose decides, which sure. really mm -hmm. tells you something. Yep. Uh, and I, I suspect, I don't know, I, but I suspect Peter McKay might be one of them. Um, so as the people who may end up running against Rana Ambrose are people who have no hope of winning anyway. Like you end up sort of with the lesser. And I would also say what the conservatives probably need is uh, someone they don't have to introduce to Canadians. Yep. That was a big part of the problem with Andrew Scheer. Other people defined him. They are gonna, going to want a leader that is defined already that and you know we do make the mistake when we're in Ottawa and I did work there for a while we uh, have this tendency to think people know people really well but actually they have no clue who they are no. and that, Quebec, yeah that was a big part really Jeff well. of even yeah. before Jagmeet Singh and Andrew Shear during the yeah. campaign right yeah. yeah and you saw once they did get to know them how the favorability ratings changed in opposite directions yeah those and and coming out of the recent election campaign um, we need to remember that there is two sides to leadership um, there's the messenger side, which everybody is possessed about now because of the experience with Mr. Scheer. But there is also the message side. And uh, as Shachi Curl Their pointed out too, yeah. uh, in, in the, the Angus Reid research today, Canadians of all shapes and sizes are saying, you've got to get into the 21st century uh, on two issues, on climate change and the social values issues. And I think that um, content uh, of, of the direct, the policy direction of the party is going to be as important in this race as the messenger. Wasn't she um, Minister of Environment? She was Minister of Environment in Thunder Harbor, Ouch. Minister of Health as well. So there yep. will be a lot of tough questions. I've got about 30 seconds left. Last word to you, Tiffany. Um, I, I guess I would just say that leadership races become a, a really uh, difficult time for a party to control its own message. So another area that they'll need to pay attention to are the, the fringe candidates, the folks that are trying to build a lot of support on really uh, polarizing uh, issues and, and the ways within which they'll continue to have a, a moderate uh, uh, perception among Canadians while that's taking place. Very good point. All right, I'll leave it there. Thanks, everyone. Thanks to our power panel this evening. Kathleen Putty, Tiffany Gooch, Jeff Norquay, and Francoise Boivin. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel 
or click the link for another video.